Well, hello there. Hello, 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 hello. Good morning, and I am ready to really, really kill me some more devils. We move the tape out the way. I wanted to kind of say thank you for those who have been really tuning in and hearing Abba about this uh, new year that we really, really got to do some spiritual assessments about those people that we are really, really close to. We've got to really, really pay attention, okay? And so um, this is number four of our uh, assessments of our friends because we have to do some assessments, y'all. Um, this is the hour that you cannot go into 2018 uh, with these relationships, okay? Uh, this is very important for us to understand that many of us are connecting with people that God is trying his very best to get you to see this is not going to work, okay? And so today, I want to talk about friends that, uh, a true friend, that is, a true friend confides, okay? That's the lesson for today. A true friend confides. That means a person that you're sharing information with, you can share it with them and you don't have to worry about it going nowhere else. But we've got a group of people who have a form that appears to be, uh, how they say, with us, but actually they have an agenda. And their ultimate agenda is to deface you or bring you down. And many times it is because of jealousy. But I want to share with you about what's coming up, and then I'm going to jump into my lesson. I appreciate if you go ahead on and tag some friends and let them know. I don't even have, let me see if I can go ahead and tag some people. I don't want to shut us off on here. But let's see. Hello, Miss Yolanda. Hello, Miss uh, Michelle. Thank you for joining us. Uh, let me see how I can get on here and invite somebody. Because I always have trouble with this. Let me see. Hmm. Let me see if I can. Well, as always, let's see. Here it is right here. Well, make sure I can see if I can invite a few, invite a few people. Um, that's all I can do is try. Because I don't need to do this. I try to get on here and start talking. But I'm going to try to invite a few people and see if they'll be willing to invite a few people because they need to hear this for this last day we're in because this has been really, really serious uh, with these people we think is our friends. And, uh, and what God wants to do is talk to us about some of those areas that we have allowed people to be in our spaces and to – and many of them got the nerve to try to talk to you about something they don't even qualify to tell you anything about. Uh, you got to pay attention to those who are trying to sow seeds into, you know, your life in regards to conversation. Many of them are not that enough to do anything but to get close to see what's going on in your business so they can be there to talk against you. The devil is playing crazy. So anyway, here we go. I want to share. Now, this, uh, was it Monday? Yeah. Is this Monday? Yeah, it's December 4th. Not this coming Monday. This coming Monday, I'm going to have... Uh, Dr. Jim Landry, who's going to come on. He's an author and an entrepreneur and the whole nine. He's going to come on and talk about music. I pray that a whole lot of the people who are uh, on, in choirs, those people who sing, those people who uh, play uh, instruments, whether it's organ, piano, or whatever, I pray that they will be available to come on and talk. Uh, concern and listen in because he's going to share some of the things that's going on regarding the seductive music in the in the uh, household of faith and a lot of other things that are going on that is actually witchcraft that you got to pay attention to regarding this music because it's very seductive. So anyway, then on Monday, December the fourth, uh, Minister Maya Bello is going to be on to tell her story. You don't want to miss this. This is my segment of my Sir Victor. I'm doing my light campaign, remember? For those who don't know, you know the story of my children's father blowing out my face at close range with a 12 gauge shotgun. But let me tell you something. This is the hour that we can't wait to no annual time to talk about sexual violence. We already see that all over the news with everybody coming out now uh, with this Me Too campaign, and that's a good thing. But what the thing is, we've got to make sure that we allow people to share what God has brought them out of. And this is the hour that God has shown me for the rest of these years. He tell me to stop with all thinking he is. He's just going to make sure he affords me the time to share this and, and have my Do My Sisters No More Harm campaign where they actually come here to my place 
and we sit down and we talk, and we have a girl talk after that. We have a girl time through that night uh, when we sit down and just do girl talk. And so you'll have to be invited for that particular segment if you're going to be a, a, one of the a guests uh, on my Do My Sisters No More Harm. And so the only reason why Maya is not going to be here because I think she's in Dallas. And so, but anyway, you want to hear her story. She's going to share on December the 4th about the horrific experience she had. Uh, she survived. Remember, we are sort of big stars. Wherever we've been, Daddy God has brought us out. And so she's going to share about her literally having a baby by her own father. And, my God, it's just horrific. But this baby went through, and bless God, I can send her kudos she has actually got her social work degree now to be able to help people out. See, sometimes God allows to go through things because he wants you to be able, he feels he can trust you with that, to be able to help somebody else out. And so she is doing her social work now, uh, helping families and counseling people, not just about incest, but life, period. Okay. And so I'm very proud of her. Um, when I met her, I think she told me that's the first time she had ever given her testimony. I believe that God used uh, this ministry to be able to help her to know you can be free as you want to be. And I won't stop this. And I want to be free. I thank God I'm free. Some of us say we're free and we're blessed and highly favored. We're going to be every night crying and weeping about things that they hope nobody finds out about. Or that somebody already found out about something, so you're trying to medicate it to get it off your mind. I'm going to talk to somebody. But happy Thanksgiving to you, to all those that are listening. I'm glad you joined me. Please invite somebody to this segment right here. Because we've got to talk about this here, that friends confide. Yes, they do. Friends confide. Friends know how to take something in and love you right where you are. That's the kind of friend you need to have. And many of you got friends who are negative, who are constantly saying things about what you have on, what you wear, what you, you know, who you date, you know, about your own spouse. I ain't in my life seeing people who be connected with people, and they talking about their husband to them. And they talking about, I don't care if they talk about their husband. You have no business saying anything. I don't want to get all wild all my time here. So anyway, I want to say thank you for those that are joining me. I couldn't see everybody. Let's see, I see Michelle. I see uh, Virgil, I see Vera, I see Pastor Sandra, I see uh, Jeffrey Boney. Is it? Oh, hey, Jeff, hi. Uh, and y'all invite somebody. We've got to talk about this here. I'm telling you right now. You know, uh, for as busy as I am, I knew that before the end of the year, I'm going to kill me some devils in this range. It's up to you to be able to put your foot on the devil, devil's neck based on what I'm trying to show you. You know, wisdom is speaking to you right now, you know. Been there, done that. And a whole bunch of people want you to be a a friend, and they don't even know how to be friendly. That's because they've been beat down and abused by so many other people that they want to put that old people, other people's stuff on you or in your life. Put that face on you. This is the reason why they never, ever have true relationships with anybody, because they got all this game, because they've been gamed and are emotionally abused from pastors and friends and even their own mates and dates. God help us out here today. Yes. So I want you to get on the phone or call somebody and listen in. I want you to write these scriptures down. I think I gave you already what I give you, Proverbs 16 and 28. I'm going to read that one. And then I got some others here you need to write down, which is uh, 1 Peter uh, 4 and 8. Look at 7 and 8. But let's talk just briefly here about a friend confiding. So that means... This person you can share your most intimate things with. My, my, I had, I had one person in my life who, uh, she's gone to glory now, and I was able to share many things with her because God had put her in my life. You need to say, is this God or is this you thinking that he can, you know, he can hook you up and put you with different people or cause you to be able to go where you need to go. But in actuality, God is trying to show you that this is not even from him. But we want to continue to try to put people in places that God ain't got nothing to do with. Let me get the Proverbs really quick. I'll help today. I'll try to stay calm. Anyway, uh, Proverbs 16, 28 says, yeah, that's 16, yeah, I'm on chapter 4. I'll help today. Okay. Proverbs right, 16, 28 says, A froward man so a strife, and a whisperer separated chief friends. I mean, these are people that are very close to us. These are people that we have lunch with, we go out, do a girl time with. You know, it's just something about uh, people who have a certain call on their life or an anointing on their life, or it's just something about 
people just being jealous because they don't have no husband. They don't have no man. Or they're trying to convince you that, you know, at least I ain't got, I ain't got to answer nobody. I know you heard that before, those that, that are married now uh, uh, and they still single. You know, I, I don't have to answer to nobody. You know, I don't have to do any of this shit because they, what they really want to try to do is try to send this spirit to make it feel like you've made a mistake with this joker or you choose them over our relationship, our friendship. It's crazy. We need to understand that this is not even of God. And we got to make sure that we understand when a friend confides, that means that now they're going to cover. They're going to cover a multitude of sins. They're going to cover what's going on in your house because they really know you. They're going to cover what's going on concerning your finances because they really know you and they love you. When you know somebody, you love them. You're intimate with them. Uh, let me get you this matter so we can go on. I want to share some nuggets concerning gossip. Now, we have first ladies. We have pastors that have uh, men who are armor bearing them, and we have women who have friends that are close to them, and they calling them friends. You know, it ain't nothing wrong with that. I sent the message out there. I think it was this year, it was this week. I think it was the last week. Anyway, go out there on my on my YouTube channel, Sessions the Number Two Real, Sessions Two Real, and uh, check out uh, my Number Two uh, lesson for before Prep 2018 about uh, what leaders need to be doing, what they need to be doing, uh, and what we need to be doing with these, uh, what they call these false positive gifts, mm-hmm. uh, that people really believe that they're in somewhere they're really not, that they put themselves in. Same thing. People that you've allowed to put in your circle, people you've allowed to, uh, quote, be part of your friendship, you possibly, you possibly have not done your assessment. And so really, really what we got to look at, we got to look at our association. So number one, <laughs> you need to look out whether or not, is this person angry about something? I hope you're writing this down. Assess whether or not if, if this person's angry. Most of the time, relationships, if you see that they're angry, they grumble, they complain from the moment their eyes pop open. They probably went to bed grumbling and complaining. And then they get up and then they want to talk to you because you're their friend. Now they want to dump all this hell on you because they have nobody else to talk to because everybody else, they don't burn the bridge with all that hell, all that grumbling, all that complaining. And so here we are. You've got to look at, is this person that you associated associated with, do they have an anger spirit? Because most of the time, women, we women, we talk too freaking much. God help today, let me get some water. We talk too much. Real, real, real. You want to tell everything. You want to tell what the sex was like last night, or he didn't come on with it, or you want to share about how much your bank account is, you got hot chicks. You want to share all this stuff. You, know, you want to share that you're depressed and you're mad because you had to return something, they turned your lights off, now you got to turn. You know, you want to share everything, you know, and when it ain't time, you know, because you're not seeking sound counsel. And so here we are. You, you, you need to so, look at, at the association to see whether or not they're angry. Look at Proverbs 22. Uh, verses 24 to 35, to 25, and you need to look at why do I have them with me? Because, you know, I just did an, an assessment for my own self. I'm trying to help somebody now. Wisdom is speaking. I did an assessment for my own self. Now, I am uh, divorced, and bless God, because I believe that if I was, then I'd probably be going through something trying to write on my tongue about something God wants people free about. And so because th- that there's an unequalness that we choose. So I bless God. That I'm free today, and I still love men. Let's go get that twisted. I love men. And when, I, when I say that I love men, the gender male, because I, I ain't even thinking about no woman. I love God all by himself. But let me tell you something. What, what you need to understand is that when you have somebody that is always close to you, always around you, always complaining and grumbling, that's a spirit. And eventually, you're not going to realize you're doing it yourself. So about a month ago, you know, me and my ex-cousin, we are, we are you know, we, we're close now. We, we talk. But I, I don't, you know, <laughs> I used to tell them that, but I do tell them all the time. Don't, don't even think anything because you, you're not my kind no more. Uh, you, 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 you need to continue to be where you are. And God loves you right where you at. And, we, and God will continue to get you where you need to be. But what happened was this. I noticed that every now and then when he would come around, you know, because he didn't come over much, whatever, but he knew I wasn't allowed. But when he did come around, he didn't want to cuss and, and stuff like that and, you know, because he's mad about something. And then I remember one day, before I knew before I knew it, I was, I was sick of him complaining and cussing. I started almost cussing him and telling him to go home. Don't come up in here with this. This is a house of peace. 
but before I knew it, and so I had to do an assessment. Okay, I hope I'm helping somebody. I had to do an assessment. And what my assessment was, was I had to look at, why did you let him come here? And the Lord showed me that I had positioned my compassion in the wrong way, where he would be a challenge with some things. You know, and so that's what friends do. We're there to help. We're there to confide. But what happened was when I recognized a spirit that was resting on him, that every time I came in contact with him with, with, with regarding it was always something that he was dealing with, the Lord told me he needed to get back for a minute so I could show you something. And so when he got back, I was up to somebody. When he got back, I began to see, oh, my God, this joke is here. I can see now that there's peace. I don't, I don't feel this uh, me getting ready to charge him, charge the hell out of him, you know. You, you, you listen to here. I had to keep on casting out spirits while he's here. You know, so when I when I learned that, I'm like, oh no, oh no. So I began to say, no, I'll talk to you later. You know, because you're not fit to have me where I'm trying to get the oil fresh every day, and then when I'm talking to you, you I, no, I'm talking to somebody, and then you want to start talking about all this, all that, and, and people this, and food that, and, you know. You know, when we got them tired, I always call other people's name that's in the church, or whether it's a pastor, they talking about them, and you ain't saying nothing about them. You might as well gone and put your two cents in the nickel in, because you were letting them put them in your ear. They don't talk to them. Hey, you letting them, you letting them talk to you, about your pastor who is your father and your mother in the spirit. You let them talk to you about your mentor, that person that God has put in your life, who done prayed for you, who are covering you, who is coming to hell that you think you ain't doing, that they can see that you are doing. Uh, that, that's a true covering. That's a true pastor. That's a true father and mother in the spirit. They, they know the hell in you just like a mother. They know they know you. They know you because they bust you out. Same thing. So you need to understand. Okay, I'm going to calm it down. Every time I think about these jokers who want to play, I can see real, real good. And when the Lord, I said it over and over again. People are always thinking, oh, well, she, she can't see this. She can't see that there. Huh. <laughs> Sometimes I regret that I can see this good. But I told the Lord, no, keep on anointing my eyes that I may see keenly in the spirit. And we need it for such time as this. Because we've got too many people who are angry. And they may be angry with you and you don't even know it. And so that's number one. Look at your association, according to Proverbs 22, 24 to 25, to see if this association is full of anger because that thing is going to assimilate on you. Well, you know, you'll be walking around complaining. It's got this frustration spirit. I mean, I'll walk around from my, my head to, to release my frustration. I slam drawers, uh, drawers, I slam cabinets. <laughs> you know, I just open the drawer and go, how dare them? Daddy, deal with them. <laughs> and so, but that's pretty much how I released it, you know. And back in the day, the best way I released it was to cuss you down. Yeah, cussing preacher. I used to cuss them down. But let me tell you something. When God truly delivers you, you ain't got to worry about what it's doing anymore, that spirit, because you already got it under control by Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost convicts your heart. And so number two is you need to watch those people who are always gossiping, like I said. You need to assess, is this really a person I can confide in? Because you know they talk all the time. You need to see a kitchen. They're always talking about something or somebody, even if they talk about it in their own family. Be very, very careful. Because if they're that way, the gospel about what's going on in their own house, what does that say about your house? It, it, it's not going to be in the best child. Yeah, okay. And so do not associate with a gossiper. Look at Proverbs 20 and 19. We need friends who we can entrust. Because we can trust the hand of the heart of no man because it's desperately wicked. But we need to know that by the Spirit of the Lord, he will give us when to trust somebody with something, who to trust somebody with something, and making sure how much he's telling you and don't go over that. Okay. And then so we need to look at the gossiper. That's number two for 2018. Then you need to look at, you know, how are you allowing someone, what's my next note here? Uh, um, a person who... Uh, let me say this way I can say this. Who share in the trials that you're going through. One of the hardest parts of us is to share in the trials of somebody else. That's what Galatians chapter 6 is talking about there and why not as burdens. But some burdens are false. You, many of you, I know I'm talking to you. You, yeah, you, right now. I'm talking to you. You that's watching me, I know I'm talking to you. Many of you are worried and weary about things that God even told you to carry. It's called false burden carrying. Mm-hmm. Many of you are dealing with hurts and disappointments and carrying burdens even for your children that God has not given that to you to do. 
because some things they're going to have to sit on their tugs and they are going to have to be in the fire so they can be refined. We cannot be their little God. So you need to make sure you look at this number. Of course, I get number three and number four because I lost track. Uh, they, they share the trial. And what that, that means is that they stay close. They check it on you. They're trying to see, you know, what's going on with you. Not for any game. They just want to see how can I help. That's why I certainly miss my intercessor who was with me for I don't know how many years of this ministry. And she passed a year ago. And uh, maybe two hours ago, because it was a lot of post-traumatic help for me. Because I was like, oh, my God, who can I call now that I know that it will never go anywhere else? You know, when I want to cuss, I can call her. You know, because she know I'll say I'm about to cut. <laughs> and then she'll say, okay, what's going on? And, and never could hear it again. You, that, that's the kind of friend you need. You need one that will not gossip your text. You know, you need one that will be there doing the trial of what you're going through. You need somebody like that. Because if you don't have somebody like that, you're going to be in a whole lot of trouble. Because many of these people are not your friends. They're not. They, they want to gossip. So you need someone who can carry a burden that God has given you you know, to share this burden with so that you can be able to carry it with somebody. You know, they call them prayer partners, but some of them are not prayer partners. They say, I got you covered, and they ain't praying nothing. Matter of fact, they probably are hoping that you fall because you got the wrong person praying for you. You got the wrong people on your prayer team. You got the wrong people interceding about major things that God has told you to do. You're thinking your friend got you covered, and they not. Lord, help us out. And so when you confide with someone, we're talking about a true friend confides, that means that this person now will be sure and not allow other foolishness or foolish people to be in the midst of what you're being tested about or God is trying to get you to build your faith about. You know, and, and many times those people who are foolish have connections with foolish people. So let's look at Psalms 1. Let me get that out. Psalm 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of ungodly, okay, of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. You know, we got a lot of people that want to connect to people when actually these people are nothing but uh, people that are problems for them, but these people who, because the people that they're with, they're bringing on these scornful people, these people who are not godly, in the mix of your relationship. Oh, Sunday. I pray y'all send this out. And so you got to look at many of the people that we think are, are God appointed, they may be in the company of a whole bunch of foolish people. I call them silly women, especially those who run their mouth all the time and, and, and ain't got nothing to say good, but you're always getting into these places now you want to come and cry a wolf for somebody to get you out of something that you're your, your mentor, your pastor, somebody try to tell you not to do. Now you want to run and say, that age me up. And you want to go right back over there to that vomit. And then now you try to wonder why things are not growing. And so I know I'm speaking prophetically to somebody right now. You hear me? Some of us have a tendency to say that they're going to be there for you. They're going to do something for you. Pay attention to that. Pay attention. Many of them are not doing that. There are some good friends out there. Let's don't leave that out. But in 20, before 2018, you're going to have to set because your friendship is going to weigh very heavily on where God is trying to take you. Did I tell you to, to get rid of them and not, not be a part of their life? I'm not saying that. I'm saying you're going to have to gauge your time with these people. You're going to have to assess their connections. You've got to make sure that these things that they have become connected with would not spill over on you because now you are having a simulation of a foolish person or a foolish relationship. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 13 and 20, we have to look at Let me turn it there, 13 and 20. I hope you turn it down. Proverbs 13 and 20. Okay, let me get there. Lord, help today. Okay. Proverbs 13 and 20. Okay, it says, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Not might. They will be destroyed. You know, and I had to assess over the years. I'm 63 years old. And I have assessed over the years people who say they're my friends, but I've been watching them. That's why I let them get back so I can feel like the old folks say. You need to get back so I can get Yeah. Yeah, I can see you. You know why it's real important that we see? 
Because God is trying to get you. And don't dismiss it when he's showing you something wrong. Do not dismiss it. See, because the companion of fools, what this does, the Bible says that these people who are foolish, although we know we're supposed to interact with those that are lost, that's our uh, mandate according to Matthew. We've got to go ye deep, therefore. And so but what happens is that when people are close to us, and you see them running with a pet companion of fools, and yet you want to always invite them with their foolishness to come and connect with what you're doing, you're going to have problems, baby. Because the companion of fools. You need to stop having companion, meaning relationship, meaning connection with those who will never, ever be able to give you what you need. We need to be, if you can count on your hand right now, do you have five? I'm not saying three. I hope that you can at least go to four. Do you have five people that you can say that you're accountable for and they're accountable to? And do you have at least, when I say five, I mean, I just five, I just hand here. You got one that you know you can tell everything to and you don't have to worry about it going anywhere else. And then number two, do you have one that you know that you can go to when you're being tested or tried in something that is so embarrassing, so shameful, you know, that they can cover your nakedness? If you can't get the number two on that, uh, you got a contain of fools around you, and a whole bunch of them can't help you. So why are you so lonely and desperate that you got to have this type of person around you? And they got even one you can confide in. So, uh, so anyway, these close people, if they're not living apart from their flesh and more in the spirit, especially if you call yourself being spirit-filled, especially if you call yourself being sanctified and set apart, why are you with these people? These people you know, they're stealing, they're lying, fornicating, and the whole nine. And here you are married, and you watching her, knowing that she's sleeping with a married man, uh, or him with a woman, but yet you call them your friend. What is that? You're not correcting them? We talked about that the last time. I'm trying to be calm, but this here is lessons here. Some strong wrath coming by the Holy Ghost. See, I'm talking to you, because I am a counselor. I'm talking to you uh, uh, therapeutically, if we need to today. Because you need to understand the process as hell. These people need to get out of your life if they're not there to do what God has appointed for you in your life. And so you need to look at, is this person selfish? Is this person always got to be their way, the highway? You invite them to go to Walmart with you, and they hide like they want to go to the gallery. They don't want to go to Walmart. Why you got them in your car? You know, I'm telling you right now, these type of people will cause a lot of havoc in your life. You need people you can spend time with. You need people that God will uh, give you revelation about. Let's look at First Peter, First Peter chapter four, and verse eight says, "Above all things, have fervent charity." That means have this continuous, have this fullness of love among yourselves. For charity covers why? Because it covers what the multitude of sin. That's one thing I can say. I don't care how much I made my friend mad at me or whatever. See, friends not only confide, they correct. And she would definitely tell me, well, you know, Dr. Murphy, that, that wasn't cool what you said. You didn't even think about what you were saying. And we will say things sometimes hard or out of sync or, you know, out of time, you know. And so a, a friend listens. A friend heeds to sound counsel. A friend will say, oh, just because you're not an apostle, uh, uh, because you're not an apostle, I don't have to receive you. You're not a prophet. You're not a five fold. I don't have to receive you. The devil crazy. No, we need to make sure we pay attention to the voice of the Lord. But he's trying to talk to you through them. And I'm trying to talk to you today. I'm trying to give you some wise counsel. Hey, you can eat it or you can spit it out. And because you own here, you're held accountable. I just want to make sure you know. And then here we go. We need to understand that many of us are walking through this tunnel of an experience of God trying to get us to another dimension. We're going to the left when God is trying to get us to the right. We're bringing people in our circle when God is trying to remove them. We're trying to revive an old relationship when God has truly cut them off. And we're trying to see who's going to like me, who's going to be with me. Well, I think if you go on and listen to the message that I talked about last night on the, the issues of uh, commonality, many of you are getting too common with your pastors and your first ladies and your mentors. This is why you can't grow. As long as you have this equal mentality, as long as you have this mentality that you are there only for your own selfish gain, you will never, ever get anything because God knows of every thought in the tent of your heart. You need to make sure that your friends are not there to sap suck you. I know I'm talking to somebody. 
I talked about that. Let me get my book. I talked about that in this book here. Uh, yeah, yeah. The journey, I think I showed it last time. The journey under, undercover sap sucker. Okay. And in here, one of them I talked about, uh, it's a seven hits list, these personalities. And one of them was, uh, the long, let me turn this down. Uh, one of them was, um, yeah, the one I was looking at this morning. The liar loan shark. They always need something. Watch them kind of friends. I always want a loan. They know they can't pay it back. But it's soft. The liar loan shark. And then the silent suffering saint. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a lot of drama going on in regards to relationships because we love each other. Or one person may love the person. They really ain't loving them. They just could have a condition for whatever they need. It's a sap sucker. They just got to drain you. And it is very draining when you're trying to give, but yet all you get is cash. Ah, bringing nothing to the table. I know I'm talking to somebody. They ain't bringing nothing. I always come in with a bowl, need some food, something like that. Just always left a checkbook or whatever, and they want you to pay for the lunch. Just always something more on the ground. Everybody, they got to go to a special event while they shop with you and you, you shop to buy you something. Now you got to wind up out of Tiffany buying them something because, they, you know, they, they just look so pitiful. It's game. Now, you shouldn't be able to learn this thing when God is trying to use you to help somebody. But some of this stuff, most times, it's got a game. God help us all. So when we are living for God, I want to stop this so we can give an opportunity. I hope I engage y'all every day. I want to read this poem that the Lord showed me in one of my books that you need to hear uh, before I close out here because i got to be ready to go. He's talking about here in First Peter. I love y'all, too. I see little hearts going across there. Hi, uh, Prophet Regina. Hi, Quincy. Hi, Miss Dana. Who else is there? Everybody else is left. I guess it was too much. They got to go. Anyway, First <laughs> uh, Peter chapter 4, verse 7 and 8 is talking about above all things. See, above all things, you know, we know we need love. We need to be in Christ, Jesus. Uh, you know, and many of us cry Christ, and we're not doing anything but in Christ. Yes. Uh. We cry Christ, but all we are is in Christ too, because we don't want to realize that Christ is going to have to be it and it alone first. That means you need to learn how to be separated, meaning that your friends are not going to be the one that's going to matter more than, more to you than anything. And so, as we begin to walk through this tunnel of looking and assessing our friends to see whether or not if they meet the qualifications of uh, confiding. That's this letter here to me. This is this talk today about a friend confides. That means you don't have to really do a spiritual assessment on that relationship. Uh, one thing I do not do is I do not play. You know, forget a woman had asked me some years ago, uh, and I want to read the scripture just a minute. Uh, somebody told him that I could see. I just looked at him like, oh, well, whatever. I hate when people tell people that. Because uh, they, then they start thinking, oh, well. I need to try to act with somebody different. I need to do something different so she can see. Well, it doesn't matter anyway what to do. And I always tell people, I hope you can see me. Because you can see me and I see you, then you know I ain't playing with the devil. Okay? So this is very important. Don't think that we're all arrived just because we're seers. That we've all arrived and we're 100 on everything. But I'm telling you, hell is raging every day. We're fighting hell every day. I got to get ready to leave here in a minute. I'll have to fast and pray and plead the blood because people want to run over you on the freeway and everything else. We got to be praying because the devil wants to kill us, and it ain't going to work because when you're packing the power to tell the naked truth, the devil wants to kill you. And I keep telling him it ain't going to work. If a 12-gauge shotgun ain't taking me out, you can shoot your best shot. Mm-hmm. And so you can say all you want. You can try all you want. But God is watching over that. And I just said that the other day. You've got to eat it. You've got to eat the fruit of the living, the thought and the tent of your heart concerning me or anybody else for that matter. And so First Peter 4, 7, and 8 is saying, oh, I tell you about the relationship. Yeah, what happened? Yeah, talking about how this person tends to want to, you know, act like, you know, oh, well, she can't see me. So the person had the nerve to say, uh, well, what do you see? Tell me what God is showing you. I just said, Lord, have mercy. Because she said she was a prophetess. I said, Lord, have mercy. I said, first of all, you told me you was a prophetess. And second of all, you hear this elder. If you are a prophetess, then you know the natural of my life. I don't have to say anything to you. First of all, and if you say you're a prophetess and that you could probably see too, 
then you're going to know how well I see when you don't see me no more. <laughs> That's what you want to know today. That's what I want you to know today. If you don't get to talk to me no more, you don't see me no more, then you know what I see. And you know I can see it. That's all I have to say. Nice meeting you. This is somebody introducing me to somebody. I'm like, crazy. You're going to ask me what I see? You know, why would I tell the devil what I see? Why would I tell you? The devil already know I see you. So we need to make sure of Earth, Peter, 4, 7, 8, uh, living for the God purpose driven relationship. So that means the verse 7 says the end of all things is near. That's why we got to get ready for this right now. Not tomorrow. Today. You going to have to start assessing that thing right now, even if they're in the car with you right now, even if they're on your job right now, even if they're in your family right now. I'll tell you right now. If it's a hold up, it's still a blocker. It's a hold up. It's the spirit of the blocker trying to block your destiny. Where God is trying to take you. Because they know it. Let me tell you the devil. The devil knows when someone's going up higher. They've got to try to pull you down. Ain't nothing with drinking a little wine. Ain't nothing with going to the club. It ain't that we ain't there to try to party. We're just trying to chill. The devil is a lie. So many Christians today, so many believers are in clubs today till it ain't funny. For the pool pit down. And what it is is we want to believe that that is okay for us to go there we ain't doing nothing. Yeah, you did something the moment you decided you was going to go. You open the door and you talking about it, it's evangelism. The devil's crazy. It ain't no evangelism. No. Because once you get in there, because I've been in those atmospheres before, you know, where they ain't having family parties and all that. Next thing I knew, I was up doing the Harlem show. Because it's something where the old man wants to try to come back and visit you. This is why you cannot get in these places. You cannot be around places to watch these movies and things and you know you're single. You know, you want to watch all these things. They got all this kissing and licking and doing all this stuff. Yet you want to you kind of stay sanctified and separated. So you know you're going to be doing some things you have no business with your hands and with your eyes. You got to satisfy that craving of that lust. You got to help along. <laughs> well, I'm trying to tell you, especially you single women. Anyway, Proverbs 4, 7, 8. There's an end of all things this near. Therefore, be clear-minded. Mm-hmm. Be clear in your mind what you're thinking and what you're doing. Be clear. Don't let the devil trick you. Don't listen to the devil, number one. Don't listen. So the devil going to talk. He talks loud when it looks like you're missing out on something. And so, therefore, be clear-minded and sober. You know, sober not only means for you to be, you know, sober in your spirit and, and, and sanctified in these areas, but it also means for you to be sober from off the wine. I know I've seen so many women that want to get together and have these girl times. You want to drink a whole bunch of wine. And, and next thing you know, you're drunk. I'll have to do a teach on that a little bit later on on wine. That's one of the ones Lord had me talk, talk about. I will be talking about it later, about this wine drinking. Not him, so. And, and, and sober. So you can pray. How can you pray with this hell in your heart? God, ain't, God heard you. I want you to know, but he ain't answering you. Because your heart is hard. You're bitter. You're backbiting. You're not lifting up the people in love. You're not covering their nakedness. Lord, help us out. And you're going to be a friend. Mm. And verse 8 says, above all, love one another deeply. Mm-hmm. Because love covers over these things. And verse 9 says, show hostility to one another without complaining. Mm. Let me get off. I'm going to share this poem, and I'm going to leave see right now if y'all got anything. Here's my poem in my book. This is the other book I wrote. This is one of the books I wrote years ago. I ran across when I was in my closet. It's called Inside Out. This is years ago, the journal string. Okay. So I was looking at it the other night, and I saw this. I thought I want to let y'all hear this. Yeah. This is one of the pieces I wrote in it. Okay. I love people. Let me tell you now. I love people. I work hard to treat people with the good that they treat me. But some people work hard to please people to keep friends, fame, or peace. They even go to the extreme to pay their way into a friendship. Some will plan dinners, buy gifts, give money, and still get treated coldly with cruelty and bold disrespect. The devil is crazy, real bold today. People pleasers are confused about what it takes to win a true friend. It's sad to say, but it's really true. People pleasers are usually left out, used up, blue, lonely, and never keep a friend. The lives of people pleasers are often thought of like the closing of a sad story. The end. That's my message 
that I typed in my poetry book called People Pleasers. And many of us, that's where we are today, with people pleasers. You haven't really, really found the right friend. It's God's desire that above all, that you would walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. It is God's desire that you begin to search him first about your friendship, to talk to him about how to handle the disconnection, which means that you can't hang around them all the time like you used to. You're going somewhere. I'm I'm prophesying to you now. You're going somewhere. And I know for such a time as for him to have me to do these series on friends' lessons, you've got to get it straight before 2018. You're going to have to. It's God's desire that it says here in verse 7, uh, the end of all things is near. The end of that relationship is near. Near as I'm talking to you right now. You've got to make a decision. The hardest thing that I ever did was had to let a, a close friend go who refused to realize the God call, God's call on my life because they wanted me to still drink and smoke dope with them and all that. But I told them I love you, but I love you enough to let you go. I know I'm talking to somebody. You can go and do you, but you will not come around my house no more with that. You will not come over here with these clothes half naked around my man, my husband. You know, you will not do these things. I know I'm talking to somebody. You will not do them anymore. You will not bring them here anymore. It's not welcome here. This house belongs to the Lord. My life belongs to the Lord. It's a lonely walk, but if you think about it, if you can't confide your deepest secrets, if you cannot be one that God can use that others can confide in you because you have this issue that you're angry and so everybody's going down, everybody's down on you, so you want to bring them down with you, I know I'm talking to somebody. Be careful what you're saying to people. And we're the women, like I said, we talk too much. Want to be quiet sometimes, and then God can show you in your eyes that they're speaking. Because the eyes can see and hear. Yes, it can. This is why you need to be quiet and ask Abba, what is that I see in them? Why do I see this, Daddy? Why does this bother me? Why do I feel uncomfortable about their presence? He's trying to ring your bell and say, this is not your friend, my son. This is not your friend, my daughter. And so I'm going to get off of here with a prayer and do my shout out. Father, we thank you that today that you're going to talk to that one that I've given this message to about a friend confides. I thank you that they'll consider that they should not sit in the seat of the scornful nor have connections or relationships with those that are walking ungodly. And so, Father, we thank you that in Jesus' name, by the power of your presence, I release the anointing over this line even now that they'll begin to seriously assess They'll begin to see because the end is so near now than ever before, that before 2018 their minds will be clear, their hearts will be sober, and above all things they will show and demonstrate true love to show the person that they don't want to be angry. They don't want that spirit around them. They want patience. They want the fruit of the spirit. They want love. They want kindness, not envy. And so, Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory for what you're about to do now in that one that's listening to me life right now, not tomorrow right now, so I release that strength for you to go through what you need to go through even now to get through this, for that genuine love, that genuine love that you should receive from your sisters and your brothers, that genuine love you should receive from those that we call our friends, so you can confide in them as you've been tested and tried, they will cover your sin or your test, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you, I pray this has helped you. I see you there, Mr. Quincy, again, Regina, Prophetess Regina, Ms. Donna. I got to go. I got an appointment to go to. I pray this helps you all. Please share this message because I already know the devil wants to try to block it. Let me see how I can get this here off here without disturbing the, the prophet's call line, too. Love you in the Lord, and we will talk later. Please share this message. Remember, true friends cover a multitude of sin, and it's got to be taken care of before 2018. Love you in the Lord.